Welcome back to the channel. I was trying to go ahead and do the, the my intro normally, but I went to the dentist. I'm just getting back from the dentist. And um, my mouth is still numb. And it feels it's so numb. It's numb all up in here. My nostrils, my nose, all this is just numb because I got work done on my two front teeth. Got my crown, partial crown. The temporary crown put on my two front teeth. I got my uh, partials adjusted, which I just took them out. I should have kept me so you guys could see them. But I just took them out. Uh, I'm kind of hungry. I can't eat nothing. I tried to eat some noodles because that's something soft. Because I like my noodles real soft. But anyway, cook very well done. But my mouth is just kind of numb. But anyway... I decided to come on and share what was going on today with me. Um, let me show y'all my front teeth right quick. See that? See how white they are? That's on temporary crown. Y'all know this side of my face is droops from the stroke, so let me use the hand. So the two front teeth got crowned today. And um, I had no idea that getting my teeth crowns put on, that I I did not know I was going to have to get numbing medicine put on, two shots injected in the top. It took a long time to me because they have to file down your normal teeth. And I don't know, I guess shape them up for the, for the do the, the uh, temporary crown. But anywho... I'm back from the doctor. My eyes still running water because when they gave me that shot, baby, I was crying like a baby. I cannot. I am so terrified of the dentist. I was really crying. But since I'm doing a video, I wanted to tell y'all what I wanted to talk about today was I wanted to read from Revelation 22, verses 6 through 10, verses 12 and 13, and verses 16 and 21. This uh, particular lesson, this is my Sunday school lesson. This is the last lesson in the book, and it is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, talking about Jesus. He is the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Y'all got to excuse me, I'm laying on the bed. Oh, oh. I'm trying to, trying to make this thing work here. I really don't feel like getting up. I'm going to get up this today because I'm going to do my, um, I'm going to do my cardio exercise by the time I get ready to do my, my workout today. Hopefully my mouth will be the, got all the way back from numb and I'll be back to myself, right? But, ugh. I hate that numb feeling. Um, and I hate that because it feels so big, even though my mouth ain't big, but it feels heavy and big and let's get into this word. Okay. The, the title is the alpha and the omega. That's what omega. This is what this lesson going to be about. The memory verse read as thus, he which testified these things said, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus, Revelations 22 and 20. I'm going to try to make it through this video, guys, okay? Bear with me. Uh, Revelation 22, starting at the 6th verse. I'm going to read the 22, 6 through, uh, 6 through 10. I'm going to skip 11 because that's what's not in the lesson. And then 12 and 13. And then, uh, come here and shut my door for me. And then verse 16 and 17, verse 18, 
19, 20, and 21. So verse 11 is the only one that we won't be reading on here because that verse particularly do not talk about what this title is going to be talking about. So verse 11 is not going to be read. But just because I'm not going to read verse 11, let's go to uh, uh, verse 11 in the Bible right quick. Y'all, oh, my mouth is... Uh, I wonder when you get stuff done to your mouth and then when it start, I don't know, you know when it start getting that tingly feeling? Baby, you already know it's going to get ready to come alive, so I know I'm going to have to... Take me a pain pill. Okay. Yeah, bear with me. These pages be so thin. So verse 11 says, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him mm, be holy still. Okay? So what those that scripture is saying is saying that whatever you're doing, when Jesus is on his way back, keep on doing it. If you're holy, stay holy. If you're righteous, stay righteous. If you're filthy, stay filthy. Whatever it is you're doing, you keep on doing it. It's too late. To try to change and get it right now, okay? This is actually talking about the promise of Jesus' return, okay? So let's read this so we get, what I do with that? We can get an understanding. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, uh, uh, my mouth is still like, uh, you know leaking water okay revelation 22 verse 6 and this read is this and he said unto me these sayings are faithful and true and the lord god of the holy prophet sent his angel to show unto his servants the thing which must shortly be done behold i come quickly blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book and I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then said he unto me, See thou, see thou, do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keepeth the saying of this book, worship God. And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. Now, before we get to that 12th verse where it's saying, Behold, I come quickly, that's where the 11th verse was saying, Whatever you are doing, keep on doing it. If you are filthy, you stay filthy. If you are righteous, you stay righteous. If you are holy, continue to be holy. Whatever you're doing, you just keep right on doing it, okay? Because he said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To give every man, not some men, not some people, not a certain person. He said, Every man. He came so to give every man. His reward, he said, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work. He's going to give you, pay you according to your work, which means you either got a chance of making it to heaven or you're going to spend eternity in hell. And then it says, 13, I am the Alpha and the Omega, I am the beginning and the end. I am the first and the last. Verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. 
I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star and the spirit and the bride come say and let him that hear it come say and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely for i testify unto every man that hear the words of the prophecy of this book if any man shall add unto these things god shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book and if any man shall take away from the words of this book of this prophecy god shall take away his part out of the book of life so let's make sure you get an understanding of that. He said, if any man should take away from the words of the book of the Holy Bible, the King James Bible, if anybody take away the words, changing of his words in his Bible, he said, God going to take away, take his part out of the book of life. So some of your life is going to be taken. And then they say, and out of the Holy City, from the things which are written in this book. He which testified these things said, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So, in the introduction, it was telling us that someone Someone once said that the theme of the Old Testament is that Christ is coming, while the theme of the New Testament is that Christ is coming again. To be sure, much is said in both Testaments concerning the, concerning the coming of the Lord. Regarding the first coming of Christ, we have also, mo also a more sure word of Christ. A sure word of prophecy in Second Peter 1 and 19. For those events had already occurred, but the concerning the second coming, we wait in confident expectation, knowing that Christ will be faithful to his promise to return. All true Christians believe that he will appear the second time. That's in Hebrews 9, 28. We must be careful, however, to avoid the dangerous practice of attempting to a certain precise date concerning this, our Lord was crystal clear of that day and that hour knoweth no man, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. And that's Mark 13 and 32. So what it is saying, be careful when you saying that the Lord is coming back. You know how people's predicting the day that the Lord is going to come back, the year he's going to come back. He already forewarned you and said, don't try to predict a date. He said, no man know the day nor the hour when the Son of, of God is going to return. So stop trying to prophesy because when you do, you either take adding to the word or you taking away from that word. And if you take away from that word, what did he say? He said that your life, some of your life is going to be taken out of the book of life. And you don't want to be uh, held in contempt for that. But if we go to, excuse me, if we go to, Go back to the footnotes, and the footnotes started at, uh, I think that was the sixth verse, where he said, and he said unto me, these things are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophet sent his angels to show unto his servant the thing which must shortly be done, talking about the promises of Jesus Christ's return. And then when we go to the footnotes, it says, Hearing the reading, hearing our reading and eyewitness account is the next best thing to seeing the event yourself. John witnessed the events reported in Revelation and he wrote them down so we could see and believe as he did. If you have read this far, you have seen. Have you also believed? 
The first of the Ten Commandments is, listen to this, the very first of the Ten Commandments. This is also, too, coming from um, the scriptures, 8 and 9. It says, the first of the Ten Commandments is, thou shalt have no other God before me. That's from Exodus 20 and 3. Jesus said that the greatest commandment of Moses' law was, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And that came out of Matthew 22. Everybody should know that. And then it say here at the end of the Bible, this truth is re reiterated. The angels instructed John to worship God. God alone is worthy of our worship and our adoration. He is above all creation, even the angels. He is above all creation, hallelujah, even the angels. And are there people's ideals Goals of possession that occupy central places in your life, crowding, crowding God out. Is there anything in your life that um occupy um that that occupy your time, occupy your your entire being? You know, it, what is it? Is it people's? Is it ideal? Is it your job? Is it your goal? Your possession? Or what is it? Don't let nothing occupy you, take you away from God, because he said right here, right here in the Bible, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Nothing supposed to come before God. And then it says that, uh, where we at? And then it says the angel told, tells John what to do after his vision is over. Instead of sealing up what he has written as Daniel was commanded to do in Daniel 12, the book is left open so that all of us can read and understand what it's saying. Daniel's message was sealed because it was not a message for Daniel's time. But the book of Revelation was a message for John's time. Mm -hmm. And it is equally relevant today. As Christ's returns get closer, there is a greater polarization between God followers and Satan's followers. We must read the book of Revelation. We must hear its message. And be prepared for Christ's imminent return. Those who do his commandments are daily striving to remain faithful and ready for Christ's return. My God. And that's what we want to do. In, in Eden... Adam and Eve was barred from the tree of life because their because of their sin. That's in generation. And in the new earth, God people will eat from the tree of life because their sins have been removed by Christ's death and his resurrection. So those of us that strive for perfection, that is striving to live right, to make it to heaven, that's making heaven our number one goal, that is loving God with our whole mind, heart, and soul and body, one day we are going to be able to eat from the tree of life. It said those who eat from the from eat from the fruit of this tree are going to live forever. We will live forever if we make it. We just hold on. If we uh, run and don't faint. If we just walk and don't get weary, if we just hold on and be steadfast on God's word and his love, let me tell you something. One day we're going to eat from the tree of life and we'll live forever in paradise. Hold on. Hold on, my sisters and brothers in Christ. Help 
is here. We got all the help we need, and that's Jesus Christ. It say, if Jesus had forgiven your sins, you will have the right to eat from this tree. Okay? If you want to read more about that, um, just go back and read uh, Revelation 22. And then it say, the exact location of these sinners is not known, nor is it relevant. They are outside. They will judge and condemn. John emphasis is that nothing evil and no sinner will be in God's presence to corrupt or to harm any of God's faithful people. Telling you guys, this word of God is powerful. Everything we need to live, to live after this world has been destroyed is in this Bible. He had he had this book written, and when it got to this part, he didn't he told them don't seal it up, let it stay open so that peoples can read, can see, and to hear and know what they must do, what it's gonna take for us to make it to heaven. All it takes is the faith as a grain of makes a mustard seed, and for us to be stay steadfast and be faithful. In God's word, my God. Uh, we go run down to verse 19, 18 and 19. The footnotes say this warning is given to those who might purposely distort the message of this book. Moses gave a simpler warning in Deuteronomy. We too must handle the Bible with care and great respect so that we do not distort the messages in this Bible. Even unintentionally, we should be quick to put its principles into patience in our into practice in our lives. No human explanation or interpretation of God's word should be elevated to the same authority as the text itself. We don't know the day nor the hour, but Jesus. Is coming soon and he's coming unexpectedly. The good news to those who trust him, this is good news to those of us who trust him, but it's a terrible message for those who have rejected Jesus and staying under judgment. So means at any moment, and we must be ready for him. Always prepare for the return of Jesus. Would Jesus suddenly appear? Catch you off guard. That is the question of the day. Would Jesus suddenly appear here? Back here. Would he catch you off guard? I hope you guys got something out of this um, little Bible study. I wanted to give y'all something, even though I'm not feeling good. You know, I got my mouth done, but I hope y'all got something out of this. So read Revelation 22, the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus is soon to return. Will you be ready? Will Jesus come and catch you out, God? I love you guys. Oh, I hate that tingling feeling. Y'all see my teeth? The two flower. My teeth need cleaning so bad, but that's okay. I brush them every day, two times a day, honey. Sometimes three times a day, depending on what I eat. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share. My mouth is juicy because my mouth is numb. All up in my nose is numb. But don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Thumbs up this video. Leave me a little comment down below. And I want to tell you guys that I love you. And have a blessed day. Until the next video, remember, we are all under one God, one nation, one love. Peace. Until the next video, God bless. And I'll see you guys. Now I'm going to give me some rest. Bye. God bless. I love you all.